out that many feel could steal the show and be explosive. It is a matchup of two former titleists. 115 pound belt holder Jerry Penalosa at one time now steps up to face the bigger and just as experienced former belt holder Mauricio Martinez. Jerry Penalosa, the elder statesman of Freddie Roach's Filipino connection. Mauricio Martinez, the naturally bigger man. Penalosa, the best friend and roommate of Manny Pacquiao, one of the pound for pound elites. And the word is that Pac Man, to motivate Penalosa, is offering to match his purse if Jerry can win by knockout tonight. See if he can cash in. As for Mauricio Martinez, like Penalosa, also a southpaw, also a former world titleist. Last year, he fought for a 118 pound alphabet soup belt and again came up short. But that was his only loss among his last 13 fights. Very confident, and he's told us that he's matured as a fighter. Rich, the tail of the tape. All right, let's see how these uh, two fighters stack up against each other uh, numerically this evening as they get into the ring. Both are great veterans. You see the age. They are a little bit long in the tooth. And as far as the physical advantages, those go to Mauricio Martinez as he steps into the ring here tonight against Jerry Penalosa. Height and reach definitely in the Martinez corner. For the official introductions, here's Lupe Contreras. From the Don Haskins Center, El Paso, Texas, Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with Southwest Airlines and the new Tampico Energy Drink with its powerful citrus taste. Tampico Energy Drink is El Mas Bravo. An HBO pay-per-view, we welcome you to an evening of world-class professional boxing. Being supervised by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, Executive Director is William Koontz, Boxing Administrator is Dickie Cole. This bout set for 10 rounds of boxing in the Bantam weight division. The judges are Sam Garza, Raul Valencia, and Jerry Wright. The referee, Ruben Carrion. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he steps in wearing blue trunks trimmed in black and white and weighing in at 119 pounds. As a professional, he maintains a record consisting of 31 victories, along with six losses, one draw, and 21 of his victories coming by way of knockout. De Colón, Panama, Mauricio. Nyanyara Martinez. Across the ring in the red corner, wearing black trunks trimmed in gold and weighing in at an identical 119 pounds. With a professional record of 50 victories, with only five losses, two draws, and 33 of his victories coming by way of knockout. The former WBC Super Flyweight Champion of the World, fighting out of San Carlos, Las Filipinas, Jerry Peñalosa. All right, Jerry. Let's go. All right, my dear sir, Jerry, we know the peak fight instruction in the dress room. Any questions? I'm going to caution you again, obey my commands at all times, most important of all, protect yourselves at all times. This is high right here, this is going to be fair, all right? Touch gloves, we turn to your corner. Ruben Carrion, the third man inside tonight, the referee for this 10-round bantamweight fight. Jerry Penalosa, 34 years old, former world champion at 115 pounds, was the junior bantam champ back in 97 and 98. Interestingly enough, Come Rich, Southpaw versus Southpaw, and Jerry's comment was, I love it. Yeah, I feast on lefties. <laughs> he likes uh, to fight lefties. In fact, uh, Freddie Roach, uh, his trainer, uh, told me this morning, he said he kills Southpaws in the gym. <laughs> he natural, loves to be in there with them. Natural right-handed fighter. And of course, that gives him a good advantage with that lead jab and the potential for a very accurate right hook. Shows it off there against Martinez. Both men trading jabs. I believe your boxing purists uh, tonight who are watching will really appreciate both fighters here. These are two skilled fighters. Uh, Joe, they both 
have uh, great technique. They've both been around the block. They've both been in with good fighters. They're just real professionals, real professional prize fighters. And they're at a stage in their careers where one man is going to advance himself and get back in the mix, and the other is going to take a pretty big drop. So it's a good fight, a risk-reward fight. And if, if that is the case with Penalosa, I think it would surprise people if he really does get back all the way uh, back to the top once again. I mean, he was being urged by some riders in the Philippines as long as uh, four years ago to uh, retire. Of course, Rich, the extra motivation that they come into this bout when they started the week, they were not going to be on the televised pay-per-view card. And now maybe a little extra motivation to show off their skills to the big audience. Straight left hand by Martinez. Martinez is ranked by all the sanctioning bodies across the board in, the, in their top tens, their various top tens, and is ranked as high as number one in one of them. Same organization that he held a belt in just six years ago. He's won 12 of his last 13 as Martinez. Martinez looking to pick up the pace here a little bit. Both men busy in this first round, scheduled for 10. Good work with the jab, tries to come behind with the straight left hand. Now to the body with the jab, just misses. Sometimes southpaw versus southpaw fights erupt and evolve into something rather ugly to watch. But with these two, that's kind of doubtful. That was a nice straight left hand from Penalosa. That was the cleanest punch of the round. And he's looking to get real aggressive now after it. That's the strength advantage there for Martinez, Joe. Naturally bigger man. That was a concern with Freddie Roach and the corner of Penalosa. Oh, and that left hand does damage. Two, three, four. That was a beauty, five, and that was six, a legit knockdown. Seven, eight. All right. I'm surprised that Martinez would get tagged with a punch like that. That one came from way back. What a start for the 34-year-old Filipino. Hey, be careful with those punches. Yeah. 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 The yeah. He's trying to bait you in. How you feeling? When you, when you make, make him miss, don't just, he's a sophomore just like you, so make him miss. All right, Penalosa just landed a left hand moments before he was able to land the knockdown blow. There you see the left hand. That wobbled him a bit. And then that straight left hand. And look at that left knee. You see it just crumple underneath. That's a dead giveaway that that's a real knockdown, folks. And Penalosa, who was very aggressive in his last fight, comes out aggressive here tonight and throws that whistling left hand. Big start to the evening for Penalosa. Freddie Roach said that, technically speaking, Penalosa is the best of the Filipino fighters. And now that he's sitting down on his punches, he likes where his future is going. Saw a glimpse of that early on. He seems to want to be a more entertaining, more energetic fighter in the ring now. Uh, and he was very aggressive in that last fight that he had, and he's, boy, he's starting out the same way. Hey, at 34 years old, no time to waste. Martinez with his legs back underneath him here in the second round. Stunned in the final minute of that first round. Flush left hand from Penalosa. Martinez now beginning to answer back and trying to get some respect from Penalosa. Who was walking in fairly uninhibited. Tries the uppercut. Jerry was out of boxing a couple years, retired. Then I came back because I just missed something. 4 0 since on that comeback. On paper, that this is the hardest fight during that stretch. And that two year retirement, 2002 to 2004. But there's so much momentum, Rich, right now in the whole Filipino boxing scene, all obviously sparked 
by Manny Pacquiao. It is unbelievable. When, when Penalosa was champion, Joe, it was kind of like Jerry and, you know, 10, uh, ten other guys, but, but nobody really knew. But now, of course, the uh, Filipino fighters are really making their mark tremendously, led by Pacquiao. And here he comes again. It's a good combination. He went right hook, straight left, and then two more punches followed. Right hand to the body, left hand upstairs from Martinez. I thought that was very good recuperative powers by Martinez in the first round, Joe, because when he went down, I mean, the way his leg crumpled underneath him and his eyes kind of rolled back a little, he looked really desperately hurt. And by about the count of five or six, he suddenly seemed to be back together again. He had the wet noodle leg, and now he's sturdy. And another good left hand. Martinez. No, he's very active. And again, this is a skilled fighter. And he's uh, he's a clever guy who knows a lot of different tricks. Fighter with a lot of career momentum. He's won 12 of 13. His only loss was in Thailand fighting for the belt yet again. I want to alert you to a couple of things about Martinez. One thing that occurred in a couple of fights, he has been down a number of times. In fact, in one of his title uh, fights that he fought over in England, he was knocked down three times in the first four rounds and still came back to win that fight on a KO. Much better second round for Martinez. Jerry Penalosa was searching for something back in 2001 when he went over to Japan the same week that his father passed away had a lot on his mind and he lost in a shot for the super flyweight title Masamori Takayama took two years off came under the tutelage of Freddie Roach and now he says he feels like a new man. Like most fighters who fight for Freddie Roach, they enjoy, he says, the father-son kind of relationship. Well, that's definitely evident with Manny Pacquiao. And, of course, Penalosa, the roommate and best friend of Pacquiao. So a shared experience. Of course, Freddie even calls James Tony's son in the corner. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's a, that was a hard to believe. relationship <laughs> in and of itself. Interestingly enough, many of those who will watch the daily work of Penalosa compare him to James Tony. Obviously, not around the waist, but in terms of his cool, calm, and patient style in the ring. Well, that's a, that's exactly right, uh, Joe. Because you know he's he is very patient. He's very relaxed uh, in the ring, and that that's two of the hallmarks of Tony, who and a guy who looks basically to kind of break down his man bit by bit. Nobody does that better in the course of recent history, then lights out Tony. And I'm sure he smokes far less cigars than does <laughs> No doubt Tony. about that. Back to the jab, but still some steady and consistent work from Mauricio Martinez. Right, it's turning into a bit of a jabbing battle now. So who can establish in this southpaw against southpaw matchup the better jab between the two? Martinez is getting himself back into this fight for sure. That time Martinez utilized the jab to come through the front door and place a straight left hand and then finish with a right hand in a three-punch combo. Goes to the uppercut, then the straight left. Martinez feels he was robbed last year when he fought for the title against Ratanachai Sorvorapan. That was in Thailand. He's won three straight since then. Been on a tear since 2003, 12 of 13. 
Both fighters are really confident. Now Martinez beginning to get his left cross home a little bit, and that's something that Penalosa so far has been able to avoid. But both fighters are confident. Uh, Martinez felt, you know, Penalosa's three years older than I am, and I'm stronger. As for Penalosa, Freddie Roach showed him the tape of uh, Martinez, and he said to him very simply, he's good, but I'll knock him out. Confidence. Penalosa, Martinez coming to the end of round number three. You're boxing well. You're your left hand. Don't wait for him. You're doing well with the left. The jab. Make him, make him back up. Come on, lean back so I can work on the cut. Give me some Vaseline. Come on, lean back. I get some medicine. I got a Give me a towel. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Everything is everything is good. Go, You got a lot of heart. The back to your corner. The cut is in the corner of the eye right now. It looks, but if it extends out a little bit more over the top of the eye, it could become a real problem for Martinez. He was met by a quick left hand from Penalosa. Something we will be monitoring right now, the right eye of Mauricio Martinez. As you heard from Francisco Guzman in his corner, they like the work they got with the left hand. We'll see if Martinez can go back to it here. Closing the distance a little bit here now on the inside, both men. And the uppercut works for Penalosa, and then fires off a straight left. One low blow before that right hand, and here comes the warning from Carrion. Uh, ironically, I was just about to say that the fighters are completely headhunting here. There's hardly been anybody punching between the two. And then he throws one, and it's low. Jerry Penalosa's thigh doesn't feel the same way. Now the fighters are throwing punches. I think that are loaded with some power here, Joe. They, they're not. These are not pity pat setup jabs that they're throwing. They're looking to do damage, and they're following up with hard crosses. As we expected, we said before we set it up to the ring for this fight that this could be the fight that steals the show. Two veterans, two guys that are hungry, two guys that need it, and they have a lot of skill. Good right hook from Penalosa. Uppercut combination and a left hand. Martinez again. Five, six, seven, eight. And Penalosa's as cool as he can be. He looked down at Joe and me and Wink as he came back to the neutral corner. That's confidence. Let's see if he can get after it now. Over a minute to go in round four. Penalosa on the attack. Tremendous showing from Penalosa. And the troubling thing for Martinez is, although he's landed clean punches, he hasn't shown that he can hurt Penalosa in the same fashion. Minutes ago in round four, Martinez trying to survive. He's been on the floor twice so far. Back to the jab. That walking stick has served him well. What has it is his defense for the left hand of Penalosa. Again, Martinez, remember, is a guy with remarkable recuperative powers. He's been knocked down a number of times in his career, but gets up to win. But he doesn't want to ex keep exchanging 10-8 rounds against him for 10-9 rounds that he wins. Martinez is a quick healer. By the way, we've now passed the 400-round mark in the career of Jerry Penalosa. <laughs> That's experience, Rich. You can see the blood now streaming down the right side of the face of Martinez. Oh, 
Rich the left hand once again. Yeah, another clean knockdown by Penaloso, who was throwing a good flurry of punches. He came forward, he was leaning into the punches, he drove them back and then landed the clean left hand. And again, that left leg just gave way. There you see it crumpled just like almost in half. I'm surprised that Penalosa has been able to exhibit this much power against Martinez so early in the fight when Martinez is fresh. That is what he's been working on in the wild card gym. The ability to power punch. There was a lot of talk about Martinez being a naturally bigger man. And how would that play a role in this fight? Penalosa is punching like the bigger man. And you just look at the two. They're next to each other, and Martinez looks much more solid at this weight. He looks the bigger man. He looks like he should be the stronger man. But in terms of a sheer punch, we know Penaloso can hurt and drop Martinez. Martinez, although he's landed good blows, has yet really to have any of a, a real, oh, damaging effect. I guess you eat, drink, and you train with Pacquiao, and it rubs off. Martinez said he was very hopeful of emulating his uncle, the great Ismael Laguna, and winning uh, two world championships. Martinez has won. He says he sees Ismael Laguna all the time, almost every day. He monitors his progress closely. Ran into some managerial problems after winning a title belt, but feels very confident in where his career is going right now. But in this second half of this scheduled 10 rounder, he has to overcome the two deficits caused in the first and fourth round by the knockdown scored by Penalosa. Oh, it was a good right hand after coming through with the left hand that missed. And then the body shot and the uppercut, and Penalosa accurate as can be. And Martinez has to get ground. Look at him back off. He's feeling it now. No real material damage done whatsoever to Penalosa. They asked, for, falling in. they asked for more movement from Martinez, and he tried to give that to him earlier in the round. And it looks as though he's trying to here as well, circling now to his left to try to get away from the left-hand power of Penalosa. Stood in front for a moment. Will he stay in that pocket? Gets three punches off, nothing lands. Now back to the legs for Martinez. Good work with the jab. But another solid round for the Filipino. Still to come tonight, we will see a much talked about prospect. El Paso's very own Tony Escalante. 21 year old 13 and one. Good hands. Good athletic skill and ability. And a big crowd here that's waiting to see what his future will bring. He will be taking on Puerto Rico's Omar Adorno coming up. Penalosa on the attack. Rich. Again, the punching power of Penalosa evident in that last round. And that one that was on the top of the head, but then Mauricio Martinez just stood still. He stood still. He didn't move after taking that shot on the top of the head and received a right hand for his trouble. And I watched him as he walked back to his corner. Second he was out. a little bit rubbery leg, Second Joe. Let's go. Seen that a few times tonight. He steadied himself well in the second round after being floored by the big left in the first round. 
He did so again in the final minute of the fourth round, but now has it reached the point as we start this sixth round where he's getting worn down. Yeah, he did, he did look to me to be a little bit jaded as he walked back to that corner. Martinez still throwing. Penalosa picking his spots in between. Thought about the uppercut there. Martinez is skilled at bending at the waist. He's not a guy who necessarily is going to dance around the ring and give you a lot of movement that way. But it hasn't worked for him tonight. And normally he's able to get away from punches even though he's in front of an opponent. And that's why they were asking for more movement from him with his legs in the last round. But basically that didn't work either. I think this may be a very, very different Jerry Penalosa than Martinez thought he would be facing. Penalosa looks sharp tonight. Look at that combination. Four, four punch. punch. Four punch combination, then goes back to the left hand. And Jer Jerry is beginning to, to show a more varied attack in terms of uh, punching the body as well. And I think he's just, he's grinding down Mauricio Martinez. The good news for Martinez is that the cut around the right eye has not been a major factor. The bad news is Penalosa's offense has been. Martinez still game. Still going after it. This is the patience and coolness of Penalosa that we detailed earlier. Misses with the right hook, just glancing. Penalosa had talked a lot about fighting uh, Rafael Marquez for a Bantamweight championship. He was hopeful of doing that, but Marquez uh, stated the view at this point is to move up to 122, although he is said to be reconsidering that. Marquez, one of the pound for pound elites, and he has called that Bantamweight division home in recent years. Martinez active in this round. He really manages to get himself back together. It's amazing. I think Martinez won this round. He's got four rounds more to figure things out. But time and time again, he has come back in this fight. Jerry Penalosa has been very sharp tonight as he listens to Freddie Roach. Combinations, combinations. Look at the sharp. This is what we're talking about, the sharpness. These are crisp, short, concise punches with a lot of sting on them. Penalosa and Martinez readying themselves for round seven here at the Don Haskins Center in El Paso. Joe Tessitore alongside Rich Murata. Rich, interestingly enough, through six, you can make a very strong case that it's three rounds to three rounds between Penalosa and Martinez. But Penalosa has the two knockdowns, so a 10-8 first round and a 10-8 fourth round. That's right, and it was close to being a 10-8 uh, fifth round, but uh, probably not. Martinez, uh, I agree with you, has won at least a couple of rounds. The third round was very close and could have gone either way. But I gave him that last round to Martinez, and he's starting off pretty good in pretty good fashion here in round seven. 31-year-old from Panama, former titleist at 118 pounds, Currently ranked number one according to one of the alphabet soup sanctioning bodies and very much determined to stay there. Uh, 
Right hand to the body, then back to the jab. Martinez, you would think, should be able to out jab Penelope. Look at the length of his arms. Those are long arms that Mauricio Martinez has. Martinez, five foot six, Penelosa, five foot four, but maybe even more exaggerated when you see it in the ring. And Martinez now forcing Penelosa back a little bit. Combination from Martinez. Return fire came in the form of a right hand from Penalosa. Like so many fighters, Martinez feels that he has been helped in the last uh, year or two by utilizing nutritionists and uh, taking vitamins and feels that he's, uh, he's uh, getting stronger as he goes along. Which may compensate for the... Uh, natural effects of the aging factor and also make up for the natural size advantage held by Martinez when I when he brought that point up to us I said now are, are you doing that in order to cut weight or to get strength and he said both yeah. and it's helped him with both Martinez backing off as the blood continues to stream down the right side of his face that cut on the right eye opened up in the third round Nice jab from Penalosa. Notice Martinez getting some jump back in his legs now. No up, doubt. Up on his toes again. They were rubbery in the fourth round and in the fifth round after that uppercut by Penalosa. But Martinez has settled in nicely. Doubles up the jab there. Sweeping right hand from Penalosa does nothing. I think the warrior tag certainly applies to Mauricio Martinez. Penalosa and Martinez through seven solid rounds. Hold on. That's, that's, that's the way to go. Let's take, get a little water. That's, that's the way. We can do this. Use the faster hands. Make sure you touch it. He's only looking for one shot. Come on, don't fall asleep. You're waiting too long. You're falling asleep. This is your fight. He doesn't like it when you hit him to the body. He's dead. He's dead. Come on, you're the hero here. That's quite a pep talk there, Joe. Interpreter Ray Torres with his hands full with Francisco Guzman because Guzman brings the emotion in the corner. And you can hear how confident they are about Martinez's ability to go to the body. But yet, Rich, you also get a sense of urgency from the Martinez corner. Well, because they're, they're trailing in this fight and they're running no out of time. This is not a 12-rounder. But he still has the ability perhaps to pull this out. Three rounds to go. Two veteran Bantamweights with a lot on the line. Who will move forward and continue their quest to recapture a title belt? Martinez, you can see it right now, is looking to out-hustle Penalosa at this time. He's trying to pick up his volume of punches. And he's back up on his toes and he's moving and he seems energetic. I'm shocked. After five rounds, I wouldn't have given a nickel for his ability to go the distance in this fight. Not after he was dropped in the first, fourth, and then clocked with a combination and an uppercut in the fifth. But the 31-year-old southpaw from Panama, the former titleist, has dug deep. There's a good left hand from Penalosa. And Martinez simply walks away. He got his shoulder up a little bit to partially block that one. Pace has slowed a bit here in this eighth round. I, I hear I heard a little bit of booing earlier in this round. I wouldn't understand why these are two g professionals who are really game and I think putting on a terrific show. Well, the expectations after the first seven rounds were so high that the crowd wanted them to keep it up. 
These are good smart fight fans here in El Paso. It's blossomed into a nice fight town. Of course they will be seeing Juan Lascano and junior featherweight titleist Daniel Ponce de Leon in action later tonight. I think I think Martinez is being a little bit affected again by the punches here. I'm looking in his face and looking at that expression and I think I see something there that he's beginning again to get that kind of worn down look. Which way you see this eighth round leaning Rich. Not to Penalosa. Although I thought the first 30 seconds were very strong for Martinez. Penalosa appears to me to be picking it up and he's coming real good now real fast. Uh, there's a left hand led with it now on the attack here. So saving his outburst until the final minute of this eighth round and it has served the Filipino very well. Another left hand behind the jab. Coming up next 12 rounds between Antonio Escalante and this 27 year old Omar Adorno. He was a 16 year old Olympian for the Puerto Rican national team. Now he finds himself trying to get a hot prospect off track. Adorno and Escalante coming up next. It's the last round coming up. Well, I don't believe it is the last round coming up, but nonetheless, that's a bad thing to tell your fighter. As you took a look at Martinez, I thought he was a little bit affected in that round by the punches of Penalosa again. Bad thing to tell your fighter unless it's a psychological move by trainer Francisco Guzman in the corner of Mauricio Martinez, asking him to let it all hang out here in this ninth round scheduled for 10. I don't think Martinez will be too pleased though when he finds out at the end of this ninth <laughs> round that there's still three minutes to go. When he walks back and they yeah. tell him to sit down on the stool. <laughs> Something interestingly enough that happened between Mickey Ward and Arturo Gatti in their classic first fight when it appeared as though the fight may be over after that epic ninth round. And that had a great effect on the tenth round. Martinez again trying to start the round fast. I've been very impressed with the power that De Penalosa has shown in this fight. How can you not be? It has been sensational. And there's a left hand that wobbles the legs. And now Penalosa jumps on him. He's got two minutes to work here in the ninth round. And he's, and he's coming with a flurry of punches. Left hand again, Rich. It's been there all night. This fight is over. Very impressive. And if you had any doubts about it, let me say it. Jerry Penalosa is back. Indeed he is. And all that Filipino Freddie Roach momentum continues on. Freddie's on a pretty good roll. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? The word we heard from the insiders was that the Pac Man was offering to match the purse for his roommate and best friend Jerry Penalosa if he could win by knockout. I think Penalosa's going to have himself a shopping spree. That was very impressive not only because it was spectacular not only because it came up with three knockdowns but it because it came against a quality opponent a guy ranked in the top ten legitimately of all the sanctioning organizations and as high as number one and a guy who's three years younger than he is and we thought still at the peak of his powers. Penalosa said that Martinez is good. He's strong, but that Penalosa would clearly be better. Take a look back, Rich. Penalosa, you could see, he was driving it forward the last half of that last round. He wobbled him badly with that straight left hand. That was the key punch tonight, the left cross of Penalosa. Now watch, it's just going to be a high volume of punches. As he's going to work, he's looking for the finisher, and Jerry was going to prove in this fight that now he's definitely a good finisher. And again, he finishes him off with the left hand. That thing was a... It was a thing of beauty tonight Joe the, the straight left hands of Jerry Penalosa. 
left crosses out of that southpaw stance. And yes, he said it, I love fighting southpaws, and he proved it again tonight. Says he feels like a new man, now at 118 pounds, with Freddie and Manny in tow, Jerry Penalosa, an impressive winner. For the official particulars, we sent it up to Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight ends with an official time of one minute, six seconds of round number nine. Your winner, by way of knockout, Jerry Peñalosa. Jerry Penalosa, 51st win of his career. He started early right in the first round went to work with the left hand rich. Well, this is a guy who's been a professional now. He's in his third decade 17 and a half years professional since 1989 Joe. And tonight he showed all of that experience and he showed enthusiasm and look at he's still got the smile of a youngster when he does. Opening sequence of the fight Penalosa wastes no time Rich. not at all he took control in the first round came out and with that straight left gave us a preview Martinez look at the way that he went down you might have thought that that was going to be it fourth round after Martinez had enjoyed a couple of good rounds coming back again Penalosa straight left cross right over the jab a beautiful job and you see that cut which could cause him some later problems after hurting him badly in the fifth he came on again in the ninth round and just a fusillade of punches an all-out assault by Jerry Penalosa, who did not want to let this go to the scorecards, and he made sure he closed the show. Ninth round knockout win for the 34-year-old Jerry Penalosa. Big fight night in El Paso, Texas. And still to come tonight, we will see the hot prospect, the veteran contender, and the young titleist. Next up, El Paso's Tony Escalante tries to continue his rise.